Um, like Steve, specifically, so specifically Steve, last Sorry, time, Justin, are we live on Facebook? Are you all about that or no? Guys, let's address Justin as, <laughs> as Justin today and not Steve. Cause yeah. I don't want That's just that's just mean. What a downgrade to be called Steve. Yeah, but yeah. It's, hey, not, it's not even cool. We're also nice. live on Instagram, oh, Steve. We are live on Instagram, are we? It's aren't good we? to have you back, okay. Steve. Thanks, man. It's good to be back, guys. Um, today we are going to be talking about how to check bump steer and uh, how to, to how to address it on your car. Um, we've got two Turbo S's here, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna be talking about that. But in order to do that, we've got to mm -hmm. go over to none other than Justin Smith. Don't do it. I didn't do no, it. You didn't. Do I it. almost Thank did you. it. I almost did, did myth and legend, go. but we we kept it cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. I really appreciate that. You're and also, I'm sorry for everybody that tunes in live. Uh, we had to postpone this because I was at the dentist. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and, uh, and so the dentist uh, decided to shoot me up, uh, numbed up the whole upper lip here, and it went into my nose. And I thought I had a runny nose for the last two or three hours. <laughs> 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 Shit. And right now, uh, this side of my lip is working, but this side, I can't feel a damn thing. So if I've got a little lazy lip. He starts drooling. Just yeah, don't worry about yeah, it. So, no, wait, wait. <laughs> Steve, I got a drool napkin. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. I'm going to do the... Uh, Austin Powers. There you go. With a with a napkin all all feed. Groovy <laughs> Probably. baby. Probably. What do you got? I was gonna say, uh, Facebook seems to have a hard time deciphering your words. Keep blacking them out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, am I lisping? Because I could understand that. I'm you guys are gonna have to have to tell me if I am, because if I am lisping, I would not want to be talking as much as they're just like Chase. They're not noticing your lisp as much as they're noticing that tan again, Justin. MRT off-road. Justin is look, super tan. He's looking more and more like me, people. Look, you, you could, look, you guys, you you could, you could be this tan too if you just found a, a, a tanning bed. If those are legal anymore, I don't even know. I wouldn't know what one's all about. <laughs> just, but you can go buy Justin it if you want. Justin has a tanning bed. No, I do not have tanning bed. <laughs> no, I just, Steve. I'm just thinking about no. that. That'd be great. The visual, not good. Hot. Look, me thinking about me in a tanning bed is not good. <laughs> not going to happen. So. <sighs> what are we talking about today? <laughs> from tanning beds and lisps, we are going to jump into technical issues like bump steer geometry and other things. I know it's hard to believe that we're going to go into the engineering after we've got these things going on. Uh, Mitch is over there. He's having a hard time even being part of this, I think, because... I'm here. Here I are. Okay. Thanks, Mitch. Yep. Appreciate it. Cool. All right. So we have a couple Turbo S's out here for you guys to take a look at. We're going to jump onto those towards uh, maybe the next 10 minutes. But before we get into showing you physical representations of bump steer, we're going to show you exactly on the board what, say, bump steer is. Um, how about this? Verbally, or from a descriptive standpoint, bump steer is simply the change in toe, and toe is tires angled in or angled out, the difference between the front and the back of those tires. That is your toe or toe set. If they cycle vertically through travel and the toe is perfect and stays straight ahead or doesn't change, then that is a zero bump steer car. Does not have any toe change through cycle. Um, a car that has, say, toe in at the top, zero at right height, and toes in at the bottom, that ha is a vehicle that has a ton of bump steer in it. Now, what's a lot? Well, in off-road, uh, I would say anything over an inch and a half is extremely noticeable. Uh, anything into the three or four inch range is ridiculous and is almost undrivable. If you've never driven anything else, then you wouldn't know the difference. And just driving along with the steering wheel giving you a ton of feedback. Um, the car hunting left and right, uh, trying to decide where it wants to go, especially when you're going through the rough stuff because the more the suspension moves vertically through whoops or anything else that's rough, the more it changes in tow and what happens is the tires facing inward, for instance, when you're in the air, you land, boom, it decides to grab one tire and shoot to the left. Or according to Chase's vision, that would be shooting to the right. Um, but on the next bump, <laughs> shooting to the very, very far left for Chase. Yes. Um, 
or the next bump it could grab the other tire and shoot the opposite way. So you find yourself with a ton of feedback. You also find yourself with a vehicle that goes all over the place as it gets through the rough. Um, bump steer is not also not just towing at the bottom, zero at ride height and towing at the top. It can be towing at the bottom, zero at ride height and towed out at the top or vice versa. A lot of things affect that. Any change in tow set through cycle is bump steer. Bump steer gives you a feedback in the wheel, which will wear your hands out. It'll also wear out front end components and power steering units. And it also gives you a darty car that wants to hunt around, especially when you go through the whoops. Oh, thank you very much. I did feel like uh, I was starting to lose, start, starting to drool on the left hand side. Thank you very much, Steve. You're welcome. Um, you know what? I'm going to put you in charge. I'm going to be in charge of that for uh, the, uh, uh, the <laughs> spit rag over there. Um, now that you know what bump steer is, let's take a look at the board, because here is what creates bump steer. Looking at this bottom piece right here, or this bottom drawing chase, this is a representation of the front tires on any vehicle from above the car if you're standing at or staring at it from a ladder looking straight down. So what is the measurement between the front of the tires and what's the measurement between the back of the tires? The difference is going to be your toe set. Um, Mitch, do you know about what the width is on our plates? Just so I've got a number that's kind of close. Is it 60s? 68, 69. Six, 68, 69 according to Chase <laughs> it would be. So let's just say, perfect, we got 60, nine inches in the front. I like it. Yes, Chase does. And we have a dead marker, 70 inches in the rear. That means that this vehicle, I'm gonna change that to purple so that Chase is even happier. Woohoo! Because he loves him some purple and he loves him some 69. Kind of like LA Lakers team going here. Okay, that is a difference of one inch. 69 inches in the front, 70 in the rear. This is towed in, one inch. What do we typically want for tow? Well, this changes according to vehicle. Um, We're not talking about road racing, so all you engineers that want to chime in on what road racing guys do, chime out. Don't even, don't even bother talking, we're not talking about that. Off-road, typically, most chassis, and this is ge geometry specific, most chassis want tow in. Tow in tends to be more stable in the dirt, tow out, Typically not, um, but that is not the case on every vehicle. Some of them prefer to be tow out. So you guys play with it and decide what you want. But on UTVs, we've never found one that liked to be tow out. Mitch, we've tried, I don't know, 16 different vehicle models. I would say 100 different wheel and tire combinations. And pretty much every measurement you can throw at it to see what it does, we've tried. And tow in pretty much is consistently more stable. It's always happy. It, Just happy, little, yeah. happy car. A little bit of tow is always good. <clears throat> So what exact toe are you talking about? Oh, Steve? sorry, we're talking. No, my bad. Yeah, <clears throat> wrong toe. But Justin, I do have something from Mike Nesbitt, mm. and I have to disagree with him. He mm. says mini eye covers in a banana hammock was a visual that wasn't good, and I disagree. That's a great visual on Justin, <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> I do like that because your tanning bed. Oh, yeah, back to tanning bed stuff. Yeah, yeah, so he said, I yeah. Would, sorry, I, I'm Justin in those tanning goggles. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> I honestly, I'd love it. Now, back in the 80s, I have done that. <laughs> I also had a mullet, uh, but that's long gone, and so is the tanning beds. The Trans Am and the mullet days. All right, so what, what would be normal? What would we suggest? We want to see about a quarter of an inch, okay? Toe in. So that would end up being, if I'm going to do my math right, I'm just going to change the rear. I'm going to make that so 69 and a quarter inch. That would be what we would prefer as far as a setting, 69 inches in the front, 69 and a quarter in the rear, that's quarter inch towed in. If the rear is a, a less or a lower number and the front is a higher number, then you have the thing towed out. Um, fairly simple to understand. Cool? All right, we're moving on. Mitch says it's simple, so we're gonna move on. Simple. What creates bump steer? This is a representation of the upper, lower control arm and tie rod, spindle and tire. If you're looking straight on, when I say look at it straight on, that would be Chase's cue to look straight on to the system. So upper arm, <laughs> tie rod, he doesn't have lower straight, control arm. Problem. No, he's got a, he, <laughs> he, he, he doesn't have to be straight. So. He has a hard time taking cues. Uh, you know what's really awesome though? He's better 
at the camera when he's not reading comments and stuff and actually trying to get people on I there. can't multitask. I'm sorry, people. This not a juggler. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that, but we'll, just, we'll leave that. To All right, so upper people. arm, tie rod, lower arm, roughly a spindle and a tire. Man, I was about to jump into this really simply. Before I do this, all of you technical engineering guys, I don't want to hear shit from you, all right? I'm going really simple with this, okay? Because you can change all this geometry in all, uh, many different ways to affect caster camber toe and a whole lot of other stuff. Simply put, if the upper arm and the lower arm are parallel, then you want to have the tie rod parallel as well. Other things that are important is that the tie rod joint must fall on the pivot point line that is connecting the upper and the lower frame mounts of the arms. At the spindle or upright where the upper ball joint and lower ball joint are, draw an imaginary line through that, then your tie rod must land on that as well. You can move the tie rod up and down, you can move it up here, and you can move it down as well. But it must have the same percentage between the tie rod joints and the upper arm joints as it does between the tie rod and the lower arm joints. The reason I say percentage is because what if you've got a cool arm system like some of the road race stuff does. Back to my artistic talents which suck. What if it's taller at the spindle than it is at the frame mounts? Let's just say this is 12 inches and this is 10. Where do you put the tie rod? Back to what I said. The percentage from tie rod to upper and tie rod to lower must remain the same as it gets out to the spindle. So if the spindles are taller, then the percentage is the same. But in a simple way, a simple world, let's just say the arm mounts are eight inches tall and the spindle is eight inches tall, then everything's gonna be parallel. What we find on most UTVs is that they are not parallel. I don't mean upper and lower arms, but what we're finding is that this might be sitting a little lower than it's supposed to be. And that tie rod is not parallel to the upper and the lower, and it does not have the same percentage top from uh, joint to upper and joint to lower pivot as it does from joint to upper spindle pivot and joint to lower spindle pivot. When you take these and you take them out of their happy place of being parallel or in the right percentage of location, then you change the arcs of all of these components. So as this tire goes up, it also goes in. And down, it also goes in. That's because these arms, lower arms, upper arms, are on the same arc. If you have this in the right spot, then this tie rod follows the same arc as the arms. And you do not have bump steer issues. But if you raise and lower that tie rod position, then you're going to have problems because this tie rod right here no longer has the same arc as the arms do. I'm gonna exaggerate on this side and say these come in pretty quick and this tie rod comes in much slower. If these arcs do not match, then that tie rod is going to start to push the spindle outward, or it's going to start to push the spindle inward. Height of the tie rod, especially at the spindle, it actually doesn't matter whether it's height at the rack or height, spindle height in general, can change how the tire angles in and out as it cycles. You had something, Steve? Yes, Justin, from Triple Digit Sketch. Correct me if I'm wrong, bump steer does not cause feedback. Well, that's not true at all. Yeah, you can. No, well, that's 100% wrong. No. Um, bump steer causes two things. One, it causes the vehicle to choose which tire it's going to follow depending on the direction of the tire and the height through travel, which causes hunting which uh, uh, actually a, a listener mentioned the other day, it's a perfect word. Hunting, meaning it wants to follow whatever tire's touching more than the other. Um, darty, uh, unpredictable. Um, a lot of work to try and keep that vehicle straight. And it also, if you hit a rock with the tire angled in, 
uh, and this tire straight and the, and the vehicle is following this one but the rock hits this one, that comes back into the wheel and that will be feedback. Now, depending on the wheel offset, the tire height, the tire weight, and the geometry of the vehicle will determine how much feedback you get. So, some may have a lot of bump steer and not a lot of feedback, but most have bump steer and have a lot of feedback. Yes. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but someone did ask. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you guys think about wrapping the exhaust on the passenger side by the shock with header wrap to try and remove some of the heat by the shock on the razors? Do you so recommend it, heat wrap? It's a good idea, but if, you're, if you have a play car, you're never overheating the right rear shock. I don't care who you are. End of story. <laughs> Period. I mean, I'm cut to right to the chase. Boom. Unless you're, unless you're racing, you will not overheat the shock. Mic drop. So, yeah, I mean, boom. Like that. Hey, Look at that. I even dropped it out of frame and working. you didn't even know. Oh, <clears throat> Mike, Mike Dubs is working today. What? All right, oh, we no. might have to go Find see Mike. Oh, no, he's on. <laughs> Get to work, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Justin, before you go on, sorry, man. You just yes. Gotta, just uh, thank you. Uh, just gotta do uh, it. A little, just well, do a touch up. thank for the sweat yeah. and thank for the, the drool. <laughs> You're welcome. Especially. It's got to do a Again, touch up. If I have a lisp, I'm sorry. It's not Chase talking. Does that make you? It really is me today. All right. So we've talked about what bump steer is as far as the measurement is concerned. It's a change in tow through cycle. Uh, we talked about what a tow measurement is. We talked about different arcs when it comes to suspension traveling up and down. And if you've got different heights on that tie rod than the rest of the suspension system, it's going to create tow changes, which is bump steer. Another thing that creates that, and I'll go back to my notes, Tie rod height, we talked about. Uh, geometry, a little bit, because depending on where the pivot points are on the arm can also change uh, where and how toe needs to be set and tracked on from a tie rod standpoint. Um, ca caster gain, camber gain, all of these things are overcomplicating what I'm trying to make very simple. Lastly, tie rod length. If you have a tie rod that is not on these pivot point planes. Let's just say this tie rod was right here instead of on that plane, and it's a little short. Well, a short tie rod would create in a rear steer vehicle, it would come inward very quick. Its arc is much faster than the arms. So watch, these arms are up here, they're a little on the long side, the tie rod gets shorter quicker. On a rear steer vehicle, take a look at this. This is kind of hard. On a rear steer vehicle, if the tie rod is short, then it's going to pull the tires outward as it arcs up or travels up. Right height might be zero, but at droop, it's also going to pull the tires outward. You know you have a tie rod length issue <coughs> if you have the same change at compression as you do fully droop. So if ride height is roughly zero toe, or quarter inch, whatever you want to call it, and that sucker toes out at the top and toes out at the bottom, you know you have a short tie rod on a rear steer UTV. Matt. Uh, Eric Murphy wants to know if our steering rack helps bump steer, because he has one on order. Um, now, so I'm going to qualify that. When it comes to a, a Razor or Polaris rack, then our rack will not help bump steer or hurt it. It is exactly the same geometry as factory. It's not going to be adjustable, so you can't change the bump steer if there is any. If there is any in your vehicle, it was their stock. It's not gonna change when you put the rack on it. If you have an X3 rack, then we have adjustability in the center link and you can raise and lower it, which is the same thing as raising and lower the tie rods, which is the same thing as raising and lower the tie rods on the spindle, and you can tune the bump steer in or out of it with an X3 system. We're going to talk about a tie rod kit that we're coming out with here at the end of this when we look at these t uh, Turbo S's that will allow you to adjust that. So hang tight if you have a Polaris. Um, anything else? You guys good? We're good. Mitch? Mitch, holds, yep. Mitch is holding his, t his tape measure. He's dying to go measure some Wait stuff. For measurements. All right. So if the tie rod is short on a rear steer, it's going to pull the tire towed out and towed out. Com fully compressed is towed out, right height that's right and fully drooped is towed out. If you have a tie rod that's too long, I'm gonna say it's out here, and that will do the opposite. You have a towed in system fully drooped, zero issues at right height, and towed in fully compressed. Steve. Uh, 
It says, I know you're talking about the front, but I have a rear end question. LOL. Mm. Um, dog bones. If I buy your radius rods with TLS, will the dog bones cause a problem, or do you have dog bones that work? Is he talking about the actual Himes? Is that what the dog bone is? I don't uh, know. No, no. They go to the frame. Yeah, he's talking about the, well, on the, the frame. So uh, oh, no. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. No, gotcha. it's not going to create any issues. Um, you know, I mean, if, if the engineers out there want to talk smack, uh, then yes, it will create a very, very small issue. But you know how much? It's like two thousandths of an inch. Something that nobody's ever going to measure and no one's ever going to care about except for a guy with a calculator and a chalkboard. So, no, dog bones do not create any problems at all. Perfect. Done. That's it. God, I put that one to bed real quick. That was great. I Take love that, engineers. I love Take talking that. smack about engineers. You know why? Because they overcomplicate everything. They overcompensate too, just like Chase. Over, over so engineers have hey, small wangs or what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Matt. Uh, Mark Yee said, love the videos. Question, does Chase's tie rod toe up or down? What do you think, Chase? Uh, the, I think you it know, toes to the left. In, in, <laughs> inquiring to the minds want to know. And most of the time, slightly down. But it's always, it's always up and to the left. Left and down 100%. is such a bad visual. I'm not sure if I want... percent to the left every time. <laughs> I like the 69% to the left, actually. It's pretty good. <laughs> Never stops. Okay, so I think our chalkboard stuff is just about done. Last thing, if you look straight down on top of a vehicle, looking at the upper arm on a UTV, and we are... Remember, guys, specifically UTV is what we're talking about. Rear steer, there's only one that's front steer, and that's uh, Wildcat or soon to be uh, Speed UTV. No, I don't have an opinion on Speed UTV. We don't have one here. We have Darn not driven it, Justin. One. I cannot tell you. Darn it. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so, looking straight down on a rear steer, you can see that if this tie rod gets a little bit longer, then this tire is going to come inward. And the opposite is true if it gets shorter. And that long or short has everything to do with the arc of the system, which has everything to do with either the length or the height of that tie rod at the spindle or at the rack. And uh, how much height, Mitch? So I'm gonna ask Mitch a question. Let's see what he gets. Mitch, how much toe change will say 30 to 60 thousandths of an inch in height give you on a, say for instance on a Turbo S. Turbo S, that's like two inches. Two inches of change. So we're talking about a very, very small amount of height, you guys. <laughs> and one of the reasons why there could be bump steer in factory UTVs is because in production, they just don't have the ability of controlling 30 thousandths of difference on a spindle, on everything in the vehicle, uh, adding up um, to those spots. So sometimes, you know, we've always, we have a, a bump steer delete for a Can-Am because they were pretty consistent for many years about having a problem in one area. Um, but they have changed them a little bit and some of the newer ones are better and we have a new system that's adjustable that will allow you to change those Can-Ams. But when we started checking everybody else's UTVs, we found other issues too. And it's not their fault. It's not because they do it on purpose. It's because production can't control those small amounts. You know, if you had 30 thousandths of an inch, which is a fingernail thickness or more, it's a spark plug gap, all right? A spark plug gap in height changes the front toe. I mean, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to say two inches, Mitch, but I'm going to say every bit of an inch. It's a big deal. And one in five inch just cycling these, so I mean, we round up to two inches. All right, all right, cool. So somewhere in the one to two inches range, uh, you can't complain <laughs> so about always the manufacturers, up. you know, doing that. So we're going to give you something that's actually going to cure that. Matt or Steve, you had something, right? Yeah, so Devil Dogs Concession has asked this two times. He said, I have a 2021 Razor XP4 1000 Turbo. Do I need to weld the rear sway bar mount for slow rock crawling in southern Alabama? Damn right you do. Yes. And that is because you have the same exact frame mount as every other uh, Polaris other than a Turbo S or an XP Pro. And so you need to weld that sucker up beforehand. It is something that's very common. Uh, the more that you independently crawl, the more uh, option or more, more potential to tear that mount. So I would definitely do that. Yes. All right. So back to toe. I always round up, Justin. Yes, you do. When it comes to tape measures and personal yes. hygiene. All, yes, I always <laughs> round up. All right, so let's go to the front of these uh, Turbo S's, you guys, now that we've got all the, all the board work done. 
So we've got a forklift under this one Turbo S. Mitch, this is the bone stock Turbo stock S, right? Stock tie rod, stock. You going with me to pee? Yes. All right, so uh, Chase, do me a favor. Let's show everybody we got stock rack in there. I don't know, you can see that. Oh, yeah. We got a stock rack deep in there, and we've got a stock tie rod on the system. We haven't changed anything, um, and this one is fairly new. So what we're going to show you is bone stock, what the bump steer, or at least the change in tow is from ride height to droop and droop to compression, right? Fully compressed, yep. Okay, so you've got measurements of what ride height is, and you've got measurements of what droop is, yep. and you've got measurements fully compressed. Yes, I do. All right, so Mitch is going to be our ride height guy. Who's going to be in the forklift? Brandon. Brandon. Brandad. All right. <laughs> Stop working and doing Instagram. what you're supposed to do to jump in the forklift. So Mitch is gonna give you directions. But right now, you guys, take a look at this. We've got tape measures listing, sitting right here the whole time. You can watch this if you want to, but that's about 67 and three quarters of an inch. In the back, we're about 68. So currently, this Turbo S is at ride height. It has a quarter inch of toe in, which is where we would set it. And right now, we're gonna go where, Mitch? 25 and a half, full droop. All right, so. Then uh, Brandon, go up and go up till uh, Mitch tells you. So uh, right height on this one was a qu quarter of an inch. Hang on a second, Mitch. Put that one back on. Thank you. Uh -huh. Right there. See when. Sorry, boys. Yeah, right there. Brandon, can you turn that off? Yep. I'll get it now. I'd pee. Yeah, I gotta pull some tension out of these, you guys. We didn't uh, do this in advance, so I apologize. We didn't have this nailed. Okay, right now the toe in the front is 58 and an eighth. And the back is 61 and a quarter. We got Matt writing this down so you guys don't have to do the math with your phones, okay? The front, one the front one is 58 and 1 8. All right? That's fully drooped. Remember one thing I'm going to say right now, you guys. Look at this. Back, get rid of my, get rid of my pen. Suspension with A arms comes tighter at droop, wider towards ride height, and tighter, narrower fully compressed. So we're going to get measurements that are narrower. The only thing we care about is the difference between the front and the back. So keep that in mind, okay? A lot of guys are confused about overall width and that's not an issue when you have arms that arc inward. <laughs> right? Um, so we're good. Mitch, want to go all the way down? With yes. guys. <laughs> down she goes. Take a little schmeckle break, Steve? I did. What, when, you, when you start doing what I've been doing, you just when you have to go, you have to go. Steve, Sorry. you're going down, yeah. sir. Let's go down. Yes, sir. He's always going down. <laughs> Mitch, you call it. Right, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. A lot more. Drop it low, Steve. Drop it, drop it. You got about another six inches, Steve. You know how long that is? <laughs> oh, too well, Justin. Chase does not. I only know nine inches, boys. <laughs> right there. Uh, a little bit more. Keep going a little more. Right there. Hook the top. Uh, middle. Go. Thank you. All right, we're good to go. Hey, Matt, you ready? Yep. You got 70 in the front. <laughs> I had to read that twice because I didn't believe it. 68 and a quarter. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh. Round that up. Wow. Round that up to what, Chase? 69. Yeah. All right, so do me a favor, do the math. What's the difference on the front? We got, uh, so I'm going to have you do this next time so everybody doesn't have to wait for me on this one. One and three quarters in the rear, or in the compression. So right now we're kind of wasting some Just doing math time. Right now, guys. I'm going to have you do um, the, this in the, in the We didn't pass, one. you know, one, two, algebra five. one or two, so we, we got to pull the phones out for a second. <laughs> For yeah, well, yeah, thank goodness for calculators, guys. Three and seven eighths. See, what do you do this weekend? Uh, I just hung out, eights. man. 
Uh, didn't do much. Spent some time with family. Parents came down. It was good. Good take, weekend. Take your bike off. Any sweet jokes? Uh, oh yeah, I built a sticky ramp for me and my son. So yeah, good. shredding. All right, you guys. I did some really quick math. It's three and seven eighths of an inch of change. So that's only this much. Wait, Chase, how much? This much? Uh, yeah, Away uh, from four <laughs> inches. I'm gonna round up so it's a lot easier to talk about. So this bone stock Turbo S has four inches of bump steer. Four inches of bump steer is a massive amount. One of the reasons I don't think people understand how much that is is because the Turbo S's have such a nice power steering unit in them that covers that up and you don't feel the difference when it's trying to hunt around a lot. But especially in a two-seater, we get a lot of customers that want to know why the Turbo, Turbo S is kind of wandering in the whoops, you know, uh, before we do the suspension or even after we do the suspension. Well, the tires are doing this the whole time as you're going through the whoops and it wants to decide one way or the other that it wants to go and you're constantly fighting that. So nearly four inches in this Turbo S and it is bone stock. Steve, yes. um, would you, sir, like to grab the other Turbo S? Or I would love to grab Go it. up for a, a jack stand? Yes, sir. All right, raise her up, do some jack stands and we'll go to the next one. More Mitch, is that good? That's good. Yep. Done. Down. Now I know we don't like to do do it that much, okay. but the Wildcat surprisingly had very good bump steer when we did all of our research. It did. It did. So while I'm watching Steve not hit the wall behind him and swap vehicles, <laughs> I'm going to kill some time. <laughs> In, I guess, uh, in Chase land, uh, this is called filler. I, <laughs> so on a, on a Wildcat, um, the original design of the Wildcat was pretty much badass. So it has very little bump steer. Another one that has, um, hold on, I'm checking to make sure that I'm not drooling. <laughs> yes. Oh, hold on, Steve. Justin, sorry. Steve, you're good. Steve, Justin, hold on. Pass it off, pass it off, sir. Hold on, no, I got Here. you, I got All you. Right, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop. Look at me. Oh, God, you're beautiful. You were quite the fluffer, Steve. You're welcome. Uh, I got an ass grab in the middle of that. <laughs> I did. I'll be selling this rag after. <laughs> so, uh, the Wildcats and also the Kawasaki's. KRX. KRX. Amazing. I mean, cl as close to zero bump steer as possible. Um, what's zero bump steer? Well, it's next to impossible to have zero. Um, there's always going to be a small amount in some way. I mean, we're really, really happy if we can get something under a quarter of an inch of bump steer or at least a quarter of an inch of toe change through cycle. Um, in trophy truck land, they're trying to get that How down to an eighth or less. Um, uh, we've built class 10 cars and things that have had, or I should say we've worked on class 10s that have had an inch of bump steer. Oh, as long wanna... as the power steering pressures and power are really through the roof, then you don't feel it. But it does wear parts out. So, I would never want to have an inch of bump steer. Um, to have less than a quarter of an inch is asking a lot. So somewhere in that quarter of an inch, half an inch range would be where I think a UTV should at least be so that you don't have things wearing out and you don't have that wheel come trying to rip out of your hand. There are other things that cause the wheel to rip out of your hand, you guys. <laughs> Bad <And> driving. <laughs> yes, yes, Chase has a good point. <laughs> also wheel offset and some other things. We'll go over that again in another episode. Hey. But right now, Mitch, you're just setting zero for ride height? Pretty close, yeah. Hey, All Justin. Right. Yeah. When should we expect the R-Max spring kit? Mitch, would be, a, a Mitch would, would be a better person to ask, <laughs> uh, even though now, he's Mitch. fairly busy. Uh, but. Rara, I'm out of breath. <laughs> uh, I think two weeks I have a four seat coming in. Okay. To do the four seat spring kit on that, once that's done and we have all that, we'll have two seat and four seat. So I'd say another month or two. So we'll the two seat is done? Two seat is done. Um, they can order one right now. Four seat, we're gonna wait on um, that until I have it just to test it and get everything for that. So once that's done, you guys will have options for both of those. And there Mitch you go. been on fire, testing every day. <laughs> yes, he has. All right, cool. Mitch, you on the tape measure for ride heights? Yep. Okay, so what are we doing right here? Um, we are going to check the same exact vehicle, uh, Turbo S, uh, but this one's got our race rack in it. The race rack is exactly the same geometry as factory, and what we've also got on it is our tie rod kit. The tie rod kit on this Turbo S, uh, fairly obvious when you see that it's our kit, and also if you take a look in here, you're gonna see that's a billet ra race rack inside this one too. The race rack is the same as factory. What we've done, and part of our new tie rod kits, 
will have adjustability so that you can actually change the height of that tie rod and you can get rid of all the bump steer that's in your vehicle. Chase is pointing at the lock nut. Yes, he's pointing at the lock nut like, <laughs> like the lock nut does anything super important. It's pretty cool, actually. It's like, hey, man, look at this off-road car. It's got tires, and they have 38 pounds of air in them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. It's one of the tests of run. Can't yeah, you did. You, you did. All right, so right height. Let's take a look at tape measure. Um, Matt, yep. about 37 and three-quarter in the front. I'm not 37, 60, 67 and three quarter, and a hair over 67 and three quarter in the rear. So we've got about an eighth to a quarter inch of, of toe in currently at ride height. So let's go all the way up, right Mitch? Yep. Hold on, and before we do that, we got an announcement for Steve. Off-road and tattoo addiction. Tube Sock Steve, you are so effing hot. That's all I got. <laughs> Thanks. Got fans, bro. <laughs> Hold on. Let me just <laughs> sweating a little bit. Sorry, doesn't have to bark. Hey, uh, how, how'd that taste? That I, was my. That it was, was amazing. My it was amazing. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Screw You're COVID. Welcome. <laughs> All right, Stevie. Bring us up. All right, uh, up ski. Okay. Mitch, you want to hang that one? Okay, you guys, so this is a droop measurement for the same one. Uh, Matt, we got about 61 and a quarter in the front. We have 61 and three eighths in the rear. Wow. So only an eighth of an inch an eighth, yeah. of toe change from what we had in the beginning. Wow. Not That's too bad. So let's go now. Uh, all the way droop. Steve, yes, let, her, let her down to whatever Mitch says. Hey, uh, Steve. Yes, sir. Go another uh, six inches according to Chase. Yep. Nine, Steve, nine. <laughs> Keep going, keep going. Right there. Here, Mitch. All right, one down. Oh, do I have to go above the frame for you? Nope, you're good right there. Right there's good. Actually, it looks like it's rubbing the frame. Hang on, let me check it. Yeah, I think it's bowed. Um, run the tape, let me run the tape across top. getting the tape measure to go evenly just, through Yeah, the just trying to run the, the tape straight across because, you know, you, you bow the tape, it's going to be a problem. I mean, I always bow the tape when you, I measure things. But we that's, know you do. That's my strategy. We know. Don't give okay, away thank my you. secrets, Steve. <laughs> Round Chase, up and bow the tape. Take a look at the tape measure. So in the front, Matt, we got 69 and Ooh. I would say a hair under a quarter. All right? In that case, we round down, people. In the, in the back... We have, a, we have 69 and a hair over a quarter right now. So if my math is correct, I don't even need you to do it with a with calculator on this one. <laughs> That's about a quarter inch of change throughout full cycle. Fully compressed, fully drooped, ride height set at a quarter of an inch towed in. So that's what's possible if you manage some of the geometry changes when it comes to tie rod in height and length on a Turbo S compared to factory. And that is not the only one. And trust me, these things are not specific to manufacture because the manufacturers can't control these tight tolerances. So it's not their fault. Don't go yelling uh, at Polaris about this. It's not their fault. We might have another Turbo S that's a little bit um, less of a problem. Uh, you might have one that's about the same. You might have one with no problem. So one thing that we're developing when it comes to our tie rod kits coming out soon. Give us another month, month and a half, maybe two, right, Steve? Two yes, months? sir, two months, two right. months. <laughs> we will have tie rod kits that are number one, patented and protected, that allow you to adjust the bump steer out of the system on every single vehicle, UTV-wise, made. So you can get that feedback out of the wheel, you can get the hunting out of the vehicle, and now you guys, because of all of our chalkboard stuff, 
understand what creates it, and also how we're fixing it. Steve. Justin, is it normal to have some steering wheel play with our rack? Um, it, is, it is normal if you've got some miles on it, and we do have shims that will tighten up the pinion bearing to pinion relationship, and we'll get rid of that play. So contact us in the front office. If you're mechanical, you can take the pinion out and shim it, and that'll get rid of the initial basically set or, um, or, or wear in or break in that the, the rack and the gears of hardened components see. And that's what, what you're getting for any kind of pinion play is when hardened material runs back and forth a few times and it finds out, hey, I'm happy with like a thousandth less clearance. And that turns into, you know, uh, three degrees of steering wheel play. And we can shim that and get it back to zero. So call the guys in the front office and they'll send you what you need or send us the rack and we'll do it for free. Steve. RJ wanted to let everyone know from Jeffrey's performance. He said, I live my life a quarter inch at a time. <laughs> not, not um, my question is, does she have the tape measure? Oh. <laughs> oh. But, um, well, accordingly, she does, because RJ just got engaged this Congratulations, weekend. Congratulations, RJ. RJ. You're doing something right, sir. Yes. Excellent yeah, job. We got that quarter inch paid off. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> quarter, quarter inch was off. exactly the right amount. Bill Gore's line, you guys, and <laughs> hashtag no chase rock. Thank you guys for what you do. He's lying. Boom. He's lying. So, um... Uh, one thing I want to stress to you guys when we, when we point this stuff out, we're not beating up Polaris, okay? We have kits for Can-Ams. Uh, we're not beating up Can-Am. Um, and this isn't because the, these guys have called us and said, hey, stop talking about it. It's just not the case. Um, it's because we want um, to always tell the truth about what's going on and how we're fixing things so that maybe you're more informed. And um, not all UTVs are like this. Not all Polarises are not on all Can-Ams. They are all different. They can vary back and forth. So we're going to give you adjustability in all of our kits so you can fix it no matter whether you have a little bit of bump steer, you got a lot of bump steer, you got zero bump steer, you'll be able to adjust it with our new tie rod kits. Steve, you have that look in your eyes like you got a good right. one. So Ramp Rat 943 said, I'm bringing my Turbo S in mid-July for a revalve. Can I get the tie rods installed and the bump steer dialed out at the same time? Um, You'd have to get our rack at the same time as well. What was right? he getting? What's he got? Does so he has a Turbo S, which is what he says he's getting a revalve, so he would have to get our rack with the tie rods, and we yes. should be able to zero um, it out. So, yeah, you're right. You're right, Steve. The answer is yes, but you got to buy a rack, too. I'm not sure if you're already set up to do that or not, but if you were, then we will have that set up. It's part of our installation process is to zero out bump. So. Des Duster JT, Polaris should be paying you guys to fix their... Uh, differences. And it's deficiencies. Oh my god. <laughs> he did a chaseism live. I it's know. deficiencies. Hold on a second. I got a few. What did you say? I can't multitask. Differentisms? I was trying to read <laughs> while sweating and not being made funny by you people. Can I try? Every day. Hey uh, Josh, get, get your hands off that camera, Chase. I'm going to kick you right in the ding ding. Hey Ch uh, Josh. Hi. My favorite, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> hey Chase, get out of here. Josh, have you got some isms you can share with us today? We got a couple. We got okay. A couple today. What do you got? Chase isms. We would love to hear some. <clears throat> All right. Make uh, sure they're super inappropriate, Josh. You are gonna <laughs> don't baby them. You are gonna shit your dick backwards when you see what I just did. <laughs> oh, it's my favorite. <laughs> Those things are from the future, but they're made in the past. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. Yeah. What does that mean? I honestly I don't know, but it works. <laughs> uh, and one more. In light of Gay Pride Month, here's a. I'm actually just bi curious to use one. <laughs> I won't tell you what we're talking about. <laughs> bi curious? Hey man, it's not gay if you're just doing it with yourself. One more, one more. You piss on the floor, Tony. You're getting old and we're gonna have to put you down. <laughs> we don't take lightly to bathrooms that are dirty around here. Yeah. Um, Justin, you shouldn't, have to, you. You shouldn't have to wipe your sweat. One more, right? thank you. Okay, yeah. Sorry if I drooled 10 times in this video. I was trying not to. I did my best after a dentist appointment, you guys. But um, do not um, take bump steer lightly. It actually does affect your UTV in negative ways for uh, in a very short amount of time. I mean, in a thousand miles, you're gonna have a lot more parts worn out. Not to mention you working a lot harder trying to drive it. If you can get rid of it and drive that thing with one hand and not have that one hand moving all the time, that's an amazing thing. So we're trying to help you out with that. 
Chase, I do not want you to go to anybody because we are about out of here. I think it is time. I think we're about out of here, guys. If you're looking to purchase this, please direct message me specifically and I will get this. First thousand takes it. But if you're looking to buy anything of ours, please visit www.shocktherapy.usa.com or, <laughs> almost messed it up, call in 623-217-4959. God, I haven't been doing this for like a week.